Looking Farm with Ed O. Podcast. Hello, everyone. It's Ed O for a podcast, Ed O. Back at it again with another episode of Talking Fun with Edo. With this being the anniversary of the podcast with our first Q&A guest from the second year of Ryan Shover. So thank you all for your questions. And here is our interview anniversary. Please enjoy. Hello everyone, it's Podcast Edo, back at it again with another episode of Talking Fun with Edo, with our first Q&A guest, Ryan Shopper. How's it going today, my friend? Uh, it's going all right. I woke up a little bit late this morning and uh, had a late start to my day, so. <laughs> it's all good, man. I'm just, you know, so happy that you can make it. So, this is going to be yeah. a little bit different because now... These are questions from my subscribers. So the first one that we got is from Robert Shane Burns, and he has asked us, did you learn any stop motion making in film school of any kind? Mm, no, I kind of just started doing it my own with an app on my phone and kind of just went from there. Nice. Next question is from Mr. Rich TV and he has asked if you read any books, and if so, what is your favorite book? Oh, uh, man, that'd be a tough one because I've read a lot of books in my life so far. Uh, but my favorite book, uh, um, I have to go with a series, the Lord of the Rings series. Mm -hmm. Nice. I thought that the a classic uh, a fantasy right there. Right, right. Next we got is James it's just Gilmore. Perfect. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Next we got is James Gilbert, and he has asked us, "Which movie software do you use to make your videos? And do you have any other favorite movie softwares that you would like to use in that sort of direction?" Well, I'm gonna start the my answer to that question with uh. I've used Adobe Premiere before, and I hate it. Mm. <laughs> so I I personally don't like Adobe Premiere Pro, even though it's a film industry uh, software. I just I feel like it's just a pain in the butt to use. Mm. It's kind of tricky, and I just don't like the layout of it. Uh, what I use and I love using is Final Cut Pro. Mm. Final Cut Pro is it's a lot more simpler. Uh, there's a lot you can do with it. Some people kind of sleep on it and they think, oh, Adobe Premiere is superior. I'm like, nah, you can do about the same stuff on Adobe Premiere that you can do on Final Cut. You just got to learn the software. Right. right. Um, uh, other softwares on my phone, I have Stop Motion Studio, hmm. which is where I make my stop motion films. Uh, I just, it's just an app. Uh, it's about, uh, I'm going to pull it up on my phone to show the icon. Sure. So, uh, so hopefully it's visible. Uh, it's that one right there. It's a little blue icon. Okay, it's blue. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Uh, I'm pretty sure maybe pull up like a JPEG of it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I got. It, <laughs> that's uh, exactly what I was gonna do. That's yeah. Especially for anyone watching, that's exactly uh, will be happening. So, um, but okay. it's a good software. Uh, it's free to use but you're very limited on the free version. The mm. pro version is only $5, which I recommend getting the pro version because it's only $5 and you can do a lot more with it when you have the pro version. And uh, last editing software I'll end this off with is uh, if you're, because I'm not saying when you make films and videos on YouTube, uh, you need to go out and buy yourself an expensive camera. You could just use your phone right here. You can right, use this. right, right, right. Uh, yeah. so when it comes to editing software on that, I would say uh, CapCut. Okay. I feel like that one is a pretty good software. I've had a lot of good experiences on that one. Sometimes it'll crash on me, but that's because sometimes apps crash. Yeah. But overall, it's a. I think it's pretty good on for editing on your phone. I definitely would agree. I haven't used it, but you know, I'm just <laughs> so. 
Next question we got is from the Ang Pang 18, and he has asked us is that outside of uh, stop motion, what else could be considerably your favorite hobby? Uh, uh, well, a big part of my life is making little films through stop motion and uh, even getting in little costumes and making comedy skits. Mm. Uh, I like to play video games. Uh, that's a, I wouldn't say that's a hobby, but when I have some time to kill, you know, put a game in my Xbox and play it. Some of my favorite games are like Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Grand Theft Auto, uh, the Lego games, even on 24, almost 25, I still like to play the Lego games. They're fun. Right, right. And, uh, uh what other games? Uh, I recently replayed the game Bully, and I mm. have to say that's a good game too. Yeah. Um, it's funny that you mentioned video games because you basically just answered Fritz the Frog's uh question right there. But you know, we'll just like oh, put I it did? off to the yeah. That was literally one of the uh, uh the questions from Fritz the Frog was what was your favorite video game and uh if you played it. But as you can see, you know, like from the screen, we've already answered it and uh we'll just move on like 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 uh from this editing point, it will still be there. It'll just uh be in a bit of a, the background, you know. So the next one that All we right. got um that is before this, but you know, we're just moving on. Is um from Lena Chin, and she is asked if you have any pets. What was it again? Oh, she asked if do you have any type of pets? Oh yeah, I have a cat. Hmm. Which uh, type of cat is it? Uh, she's a black cat, and I'll be right back. Oh, you're gonna show. Oh, oh, this is gonna be sweet. Aww. Nice. That's so cool. Wow. She's a little sweetheart. I uh I like to tell people that she's like the baby Yoda of my Mandalorian. Aw. That's the second time I've actually seen someone show their pet for um this time. That's that's that that is that's special. So speaking of which, well, not really of uh of animals and stuff um like well technically animals it's like we have our next question from splashdown dolphin and has asked us what is your favorite color green oh my god me too that's that's wild <laughs> so the reason i like the color green is uh my favorite power ranger is the green ranger so i just mm. kind of like the color green because of him. i feel that Speaking of green, next is from Splash McQueen Clean Frog is is there any type of food that you're allergic to? Like you can't really eat because you're allergic to it. Uh for the most part, I don't really think I'm allergic to anything. Uh, that's you know, I just I don't think I'm allergic to any foods. Uh, I will say when it does come to food. I don't like olives. I think okay. they're gross. They have no flavor. They're very bitter. Mm. Tomatoes have a hit or miss. Like I'll eat yeah. tomatoes, but just not really a huge fan of them. Uh, but when it comes to stuff that isn't food related, I know uh, when it comes to, like cleaning products, even though I just mm. got done cleaning, morning cleaning activities. Right, uh, right. When it comes to like Clorox, mm. uh, if I get it on my in, I have to like wash my hands because I'll break out in hives. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's in the Clorox wipes or any Clorox products, but it just makes me kind of bust out in hives if I don't wash my hands or wash right. off my skin. Mm. All right. Well, you know, anytime you get a clean up, you just got to get, I guess, a different brand or something, you know? <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Yeah. I'm just used to getting Clorox wipes when I need to wipe the counter down and stuff mm. or clean the toilet, like wipe it and all that it's yeah. just something that my mom's always bought so now yeah. that's what i buy so i feel you um so the next question is from ty the chugganeer 
and has asked us if you've ever went to Florida and California, and if so, have you been to the Disney theme parks that's been in those areas? It's kind of a sad story, but I'm 24 and I've never been to Disney World. Hmm. But one day I'm eventually going to go. I, I'm i more interested in wanting to go to Universal Studios, though. Hmm. I think that one is a lot cooler than Disney World, but I'd like to experience both. I see that. It's crazy that Especially you're Star Wars. Oh, okay. mm. oh, you're it's, good. It, it, it's insane you said that because last year was literally the very first time I went to uh, uh, Universal after my graduation as a present from my parents. And um, as far as Disney go, I believe I've been there, especially in Florida for... Uh, Two times I for me, uh before we get back into this, I don't think I've been to Disney in California, but I have been to Disney in uh Florida like two times. Like this would be like 20 years was my very first time. And it was the first time I've even seen Florida in general. And the second time was around uh five years ago as um just like a present and stuff, not my birthday present, but just something fun to do from my family and stuff. So and you know, I'm thinking, you know, one of these days, I believe you'll you'll be there in uh, Cali, in Florida, to not only you know visit those places, but visit you know sightseeing as well. I I, be I believe you'll you'll be there very soon. Don't don't even worry about it. So yeah, then, it's a funny thing for me, but <laughs> so our next uh, question is from Kids to Productions, and they have asked, "What is your favorite kid movie?" Or television show, like one that I grew up watching as a kid. Yeah, like any like, and it's okay. they say or, so it's like you have to choose a, either a television show or a movie. I'll have to pick one for both. Okay, so yeah, when it comes to shows, I've watched a lot growing up as a kid. Like right. I was practically raised in front of the TV, yeah. but. I would have to say one of my favorite kid shows would be like uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog, the cartoon um, on Cartoon Network. Yeah, yeah. I actually, uh, oh snap! I actually, recently found this at local Walmart. It's uh, the whole complete first season of Courage the Cowardly Dog on DVD. Nice, nice. That's awesome. So, and then movie. Oh man, there's a lot of movies I grew up watching as a kid. Um, but I have to say, like Scooby Doo. Okay, Scooby, like the all the Scooby Doo live action movies. Scooby -Doo movie. The live action one. The live action. Okay, okay, like okay, I see where you're yeah. going. With that. Yeah, I see that. But I like I like all the Scooby Doo movies, like all the ones I've seen. I I love Scooby Doo. <laughs> right, right. Uh, next is from Paula Kreger. And speaking, you know, of movies, now we're gonna go into like stuff of like what's been recently coming out. We got two questions from it. So from Paula Greger, she has asked if you've seen the new Despicable Me 4 yet. I have not. Uh, I like Despicable Me. I like Minions. I think the Minions are funny. Hmm. <laughs> like, you know, they're little goofy little characters. Right. But uh, I have not seen uh, Despicable Me 4 yet. But I will say my current job working at a movie theater that movie's been making it busy for sure. Right. Everyone's seeing it. Same with Inside Out too. Oh wow! It's funny because that was uh, literally like the next thing that we're going on, and this is where like I'm gonna be adding stuff along with it. Is uh, from Ruby the Pony. She is asked like if not even just for Inside Out too, but also if you've seen like also if. The Kung Fu Panda Four and the new Garfield movie. If you've seen those yet, uh, uh, to be honest, I haven't seen any of them. I've heard the Inside Out Two. I heard that one was really good. Right. I haven't even seen the first Inside Out movie, which mm. is kind of a bummer. I just, you know, I'm, uh, Garfield. I don't know if I want to see it, but I might check it out because I see that Samuel Jackson's in it, and <laughs> I'm, I. I, I like Samuel Jackson. I love him. He, he's such a great actor. Right, right. And then if 
I've heard mixed opinions about that movie. I heard some people that said it was like disappointing. And I've heard some people say that they love it. So I'm just like, I might see it just to get my own opinion on it. But I don't know. And one of our last questions that we got is from Luna and Ghana mascot. And they have asked if you have learned other languages such as German, Spanish, French, Italian, and also if you have ever played soccer, AKA football. Uh, languages. Uh, the only language I tried to learn was Spanish. I took two years of it in high school. And I'll be honest with you, I don't remember any. Yeah, every time, like, every time, like, <laughs> I only had one good teacher in Spanish, and it was a teacher I had uh, my first semester of my sophomore year, and then second semester I got switched to a different teacher, mm. and I'll be honest, she she didn't do a great job teaching the subject. And to make it be memorable Spanish, too, yeah, yeah. And then my second year of Spanish, uh, that teacher just, she she just gave us like work to do online, they didn't really try to teach us. So it was basically, right. basically computer work, trying to learn it online. And it's funny because it's like, the, oh, sorry. Oh, you're good. I was saying like, it's funny because uh, it's like, also you could just like go on translator website and be like, let me see what this word said, you know, easily. Yeah, and that's what I was about to say was uh, the only thing I do remember from Spanish is I taught myself how to say, do you remember Idubs with his meme that I have crippling depression? Uh, yes, meme? yes, of course, yes. I I learned how to say that in Spanish, and mm. that's the only thing I remember how to say. Could you could you say it for us, please? Uh, tango depresión paralizante. <laughs> And it's funny because you kind of really look like him too a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, but oh. <laughs> but it's, I've it's, never been told that before. I've been told I look like Evan Peters. I've been told I look like Ross Lynch, but I dubs. I'll mm. take it. <laughs> <sighs> no problem. So on that note, wait, hold up. Uh, yeah, it's. I just remembered. Um, you're literally like the fourth to fifth guest that took Spanish. I completely just forgot about it like it's soon as uh, and interesting enough it's like again one of the same questions i've had previously like as far as everyone else go i think they had different languages but as far as spanish it's like you're the fifth person that said i took it instantly forgot it <laughs> yeah like when it comes to like my high school they only offered spanish as a foreign language and then my senior year they had a french teacher that came and taught french for a semester and then um uh, then he left like he just kind of like up and left right like, quit his job and wow. so like the kids that were te- taking french they couldn't they, they they basically had a free period at that point yeah it's just like if you didn't feel i guess it's like like if you didn't want to go to class you're just there you know yeah yeah and uh the second part that about uh football soccer oh uh, yeah i almost forgot i never i never really i never really played it like i mean i never played it competitively but i remember as a kid like going to like church camp uh you know there was a time when we played a game of soccer football just kind of like for fun yeah so that's about it i never really uh the only sports I have played as a kid were I played baseball, Little League, mm. and basketball. All right. And so now um one of like we got like now we have finished with the QA part, and there's like two things I like to, you know, ask and share with you before we end this is that um coming soon, especially when I'm will be releasing this, it will be, I believe. It will be like somewhere in the 40th year, and don't worry, my editing self is going to take care of that. It's going to be the 40th year of uh, a group called Shonen Knife, and I was wondering if not only if you've ever heard their songs before, but if you have like specifically like know a song from a group called Shonen Knife. I I know a lot of music, but I never heard of them, and I don't. 
I don't I haven't heard of them, so I don't know any music by them. Uh, what kind of genre of music do they make? It's more likely like rock. Well, not just because they're from Japan, but like a little history thing I'm gonna share with you is um 20 years ago, this would be preferably they would be the first, not like Asian group, but they were the first Japanese group I've ever heard of. And the first time I heard of them, it was like the Cartoon Network uh uh series of like mysteries and stuff, DVD. It was in the cereal boxes and stuff from Kellogg's. And uh, they did a soundtrack for Powerpuff Girls, the OG one called I'm a Supergirl. And that was really how I got introduced to uh, Shonen Knight. And that that's literally like, um, like it, you, you heard of Powerpuff Girls, right? Oh, yeah, totally. I grew up watching Cartoon Network, so I know my Powerpuff Girls. So, they, yeah, they you did know, it. Sugar Spice, Birthday Night. Right. So that so that's basically, I guess, for more likely for our type of generation, that's like for me, that's literally how I got hooked up on uh well not the complete way of how I got hooked up on Japanese culture, but it's definitely like the very first thing I've seen, which is uh music. And it it was them. And, and you know, um I didn't really know much about them until like four years ago, which is like another group that their day is coming up soon but like um which is puffy aka puffy amiyumi at first i really Oh, I know them. yeah at first i actually didn't even know especially from that time 20 years ago i didn't even know they were a real actual you know rock band group especially since i didn't see their stuff outside of uh cartoon network especially from the area i was from it you know it wasn't like playing on like MTV and stuff like that. So I wouldn't even know that like their stuff was even out there literally until, you know, what we have right now, the internet, like four years later, you know, and that was already when the show already was like, it finished, you know, but that was pretty much how I've learned about, you know, both there would be in interesting enough. I found them both in that same year of, uh, tw you know, 2004, which was Shonen Knife, and Puffy Amiyumi. So that's a little bit of a his even um another thing from my book that now has an audio version even explains that in detail as well. Is that yeah, these were the first two groups I not only found from Japan, but within 20 years of that time, right? Yeah, right around that time. Yeah. So uh, didn't they do the uh the Teen Titans theme song? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They definitely did. Yeah, it's it's still. It wasn't like it wasn't as I don't know what it was. It wasn't even something where it's like, oh yeah, this is cool. Like it wasn't something that literally got up for my seven year old self to be like, who is this group? I got I gotta go. Like I didn't know, especially since again, like I was saying, I didn't see their stuff outside of uh, Cartoon Network, so I didn't know. Especially for Shonen Knife, I didn't know who they were until. Literally, you know, a YouTube and stuff. That's literally how I found more four years later, but that's how I literally found it and stuff. Now, funny, especially from the areas that they're popular, especially Florida. Oh, yeah, I would guarantee you will find their stuff outside. But from where I'm from, you know, I couldn't, you know, <laughs> especially yeah, in Texas, so. for sure, because like anime and stuff, that's huge there. One hundred percent. Yeah, you go to the shopping malls, Walmart, you find a lot of anime stuff. Uh, speaking of anime, uh, mm. at a Walmart, not my old local Walmart, because I moved a lot recently. Right, uh, right. The Walmart back in the town that I used to live in, they have uh, these uh, Naruto Ooh. figures. Nice. And I have a Kakashi or a not Kakashi, this is Kakashi, uh, Sasuke and a Naruto, but they're in my bedroom in a box, but they're only like $10 and they got like really good joints, really good articulation. Ooh. So I'm definitely going to be using them in some stop motion stuff. Uh, sure. uh, that, that, I actually was about to ask that too. That, that is going to be so much fun. And speaking of which, um, our last thing that we got for this is, uh, now it's been like a year since the first time I not only interview you, but also 
the thing that was also fun about this is that, you know, I've even collaborated with you on like two projects of It's Sussy Batman and also uh, the Harry Potter with the Glock. <laughs> and it's like, those yeah. were really like really cool collaborations. And I was wondering like how, you know, how much has like changed from over the time that, you know, from this anniversary and also, um, what are some other new stuff that's going to be coming up very soon? Uh, the, the things that have changed, uh, was, uh, well, uh, when we did our collaborations, I, uh, was living at my uncle's and then my mom got a house and we ended up moving to my mom's house. My right. mom and my stepdad found a house and we moved there. And then, uh, yeah, after that, I lived at my mom's for a couple months, and my mom's like, hey, uh, it'd be nice. Like, she wasn't kicking me out when she said this, so right, don't right. take it the wrong way. Yeah, okay. But she yeah. said, she's like, right, you're 24. Uh, I you think maybe you need to, yeah, basically, like, I need to move out and have a place of my own. And right. um, at the time, I was kind of going through some stuff, and I mm. kind of took it the wrong way. I took it as that they wanted me, they wanted to kick me out. But yeah. eventually, I was like, I got through what I was going through and uh, I was like you know what and I went out found an apartment got a place of my own and uh, I have more freedom of uh, I actually not being in a bedroom I have a whole apartment so like right. like right now I'm in the living room mm. and my bedroom's back there so like I have a lot more space nice uh, but when it comes to projects uh, that are coming up uh Recently, I've been, uh, after doing uh, my most recent film, which is Ash versus FNAF. Right, right, I, right. Uh, I realized maybe I need to work on my fight scenes. Mm. So I'm doing a little mini series. I'm going to do like six parts to it, and it's called Grudge Match. Ooh. And uh, the first one recently came out last week on Friday. So I'm trying to get back in the habit after being really busy with moving and um, just life in general mm. uh get, get new little film projects coming out every friday or at least every other friday mm. uh but i got last friday grudge match the first one came out and it's just a fight scene with my little creative twist on it and then this coming friday i got a second one coming out called grudge match 2 Ooh. and that comes out this coming friday and the next Friday, next week, because I just finished it this morning, because uh, last night I got home from work, ate and took a nap, and then I woke up and I couldn't go back to sleep, so I decided to work on Grudge Match 3, and I'm right. <laughs> working on it, finishing it up in like two hours, mm. and that'll be up the Friday after, uh, it'll be next Friday, not this coming, next Friday. Right, right, right. And then uh, I got things set up to start doing Grudge Match 4. And then after Grudge Match 4, I'm going to, instead of using action figures, I'm going to use Legos. So it's going to be Grudge Match 5 <laughs> and 6, but with Legos. Mm, could it be like yeah. a collab where you do like both of them? Like, because I remember like certain other YouTube channels, they do that. Like, Cat's Hat and uh, Moonshine Animation, they do that where they have a bunch of mixtures of like different uh, toys that they use. It, it, will it be like something like that? Or. I never thought of that. I was actually just using action figures, and then I thought, hey, maybe I could work on my fight scenes with Legos, but maybe I could try that in the future, like have like an action figure fight a Lego minifigure. Right. Okay. Like I, I, I'll, I'll take that idea in consideration. Maybe I'll do that. All and right. Then, uh, speaking of other ideas, more projects, uh, I have Among Us little minifigures of Among Us yeah. characters. Yeah. So I'm going to, uh, you know the show South Park, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. So I'm going to like take uh, scenes from South Park mm. and I'm going to just animate it with Among Us characters. Oh. So, like, one little Among Us dude, uh, I'll just grab it and break his name. Okay. <laughs> I just knocked it over. So, this guy, he was on top. Uh, this okay. little orange dude. The orange the horns, dude. Is uh, this like, is that a toy movie. that you made or is it uh, you found this? Uh, I actually found a bunch of these at Five Below. Mm. They're little tiny mystery bag figures. Nice. And uh, like for instance, this could be Kenny because he's orange. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, like I might do a scene where this guy gets hit by a car, and then yeah, like, it's like, oh my god, Kenny. they kill Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And then uh, I got more ideas planned. Uh, another stop motion idea I want to do is I want to do a uh, Lego Scream. Mm. The horror movie because I right, got a, right, a little right. this minifigure. So I want to do that. Mm. And then when it comes to outside of stop motion, I have a couple comedy skits I want to do. Like uh, there, I, I don't like Taylor Swift. So oh. why are you jumping on the keyboard? That's what that's so, going to be. A <laughs> little blooper there. Uh, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, she tried to jump on my lap and she got on the keyboard. Right. But uh, So I don't like Taylor Swift and the whole Swifty fandom kind of is so, toxic. So yeah. I have a comedy skit where I'm going to dress up as a Taylor Swift fan. Mm. And kind of like a Brandon Rogers comedy skit. Yeah. With that. Like okay. Kind of like that. And there's more ideas to come. So right. that's just a little snippet. Yeah. So one more last thing before we go is um uh so speaking of Legos, there is a documentary that's coming about coming around for Pharrell Williams, where oh, yeah. he yeah, it's like are you are you like are you gonna be seeing that movie? Oh yeah, I saw some stuff on TikTok about it, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna love this." <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely gonna see this too. And for that note, we have now have to say our um farewells. And once again, thanks for being here for our first year anniversary. And I'm gonna see you around. See you later. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. And now we're going to move on to the shout outs. And like before, I not only like to give a thank to Ryan Shover that could be here, but for our shout outs, we got, especially thank you all for your questions you have sent. Shout outs we got, it goes along with Humble Along, Prim's Hood Cinema, The Rebel Riot Band, Blank Thoughts. H O A Flimino Cinema That One Guy Animates Cat Parakeet Kazuna Ricardo TV Arab in Japan Saki the Autistic Guy and Tune In with Jim Cummings. And our old school shouts that we got is from SYR Bros from Japan. Happy third anniversary. Starlight Comics. Lynchpin. Christina Yu. The Aim Pain 18. Coco Crazy. And Matt for MDT21. So. Um, for this point, um, not many other new stuff is going to come for the podcast, but I'll just be doing something a little bit different. But on that note, i like to thank my promo channel for all the views and subs that it's been getting. And also on that note, i like to thank my main channel because not only of the views and subscribers, but I like to give a shout out for the UK because they've also been watching my stuff. And something new is also going to be coming up ahead for my main channel as well. So, as usual, I hope you guys enjoyed my video. And like usual, I'm going to see you next time. Bye! Talking from with Edo.